We're on the seventh video here in the round of 16 stage of trying to figure out who is the best All-Ireland winner of the last 16 seasons. For anyone who hasn't seen it so far, it's very simple what we're doing. We're drawing the teams out in lots and we're playing them off against each other. Like for example, the first one was 2017 Galway against 2007 Kilkenny. Then you, the, voters, uh, the viewers, will vote to see who goes through. Then we do the quarterfinals, semifinals, and then ultimately the winner. Uh, one of the obvious kind of favorites throughout this whole thing will be Kilkenny 2008. And as luck would have it, they're up against the 2012 uh, Kilkenny team, which beat uh, Galway after a replay. But of course that 2008 Kilkenny team hammered the, you know, beat the snot out of uh, Waterford. A lot of people would think this is a fairly cut and shut case, but I actually think that Kilkenny 2012 team, Mike, was fairly good. Yeah, well, I think it was a serious team, to be honest with you. And when you go through their journey from the start to finish, they obviously played seven games as opposed to the four games in 08. And the games that they won, they obviously lost the game, a significant game in the Leinster final to Galway, but the games that they won, they won unbelievably convincingly. Like they, they were battering teams that were going well at that time and battering a Tipperary team that had won the All-Ireland and stopped the drive only two years previous. So I don't think it's as cut and dry maybe as people think. Obviously, a lot of people are basing it on the final performance in 08. But as a body of work in 12, oh, I think it was a pretty impressive body of work. Yeah, because like, let's look at what Kilkenny did in 2008 and who they beat. They beat an awfully team that's at a low ebb, I'm sure you'll, you'll accept that. A, a Wexford team that it had been four years since they'd won um, the Leinster Championship, definitely at a low ebb. Then beat a Cork team that were definitely past their best in 2008. Now they'd had a great game against Galway, I think, in the qualifiers in Thurles and Ben O'Connor was at, was still unbelievable and if they had to beat Kilkenny he'd have been my hurler of the year or heading that direction and then they beat a Watford team that if we're honest Watford peaked in 2007 didn't get it done uh, when their chance was there and in 2008 they just weren't as good anymore whereas that Galway team or Kilkenny team in 2012 the way they had to come come through the way they had to come back you know after losing so heavily to to Galway and otherwise hammer the snot out of Dublin hammer Tipperary hammer kick, uh, Limerick in the quarterfinal and ultimately hammer Galway in the replay. There's an argument to be made that's, that's more impressive considering who it was against. Yeah, no, I'd agree, I'd agree with you, to be honest with you. Um, Dublin were going well at the, at the time, well enough at the time in 12, and they were just absolutely hockeyed, absolutely hockeyed. Funny enough, the Leinster final that uh, Kilkenny lost to Galway, where it was funny, like you knew after, I remember there was a fella in Borough, would you believe, um, Kilkenny were one to six favourites to win that game, and there was a fella went in and had five hundred euro on Kilkenny minus six at even money uh, in the bookies in Bar. And two of my friends who were out having a few pints that day, they knew we had Kilkenny minus six. And you know it, that game, fifteen twenty minutes, like you knew the bet was done. Like Galway were totally on top. And the boys just kept shouting your man's name every time Galway got a score. Got a score. And they were absolutely sick to them. But uh, just reading Owen Larkin's book, he kind of said, Brian Cody was the best man ever for like eliminating complacency. And he said, the one and only time he reckoned throughout his Kilkenny career under Cody, the one and only time he reckoned they were complacent was going into that Leinster final against Galway. And they got an, aw they got an awful beating. Funnily enough, having hammered Galway, in the league in Nolan Park that same year but it was Anthony Cunningham's first year um, there was just something kind of different about them at that stage of the year Kilkenny were just kind of left shell-shocked but funnily enough they were beaten by 10 any other team probably would have been beaten by 20 because they were like dominated all over the field but the kind of the battling instincts that we've seen so often from Kilkenny just kind of kept them hanging in and it was probably a good sign of what was going to come the fact that they didn't fade out in that Leinster final yeah, I, I couldn't agree anymore. Like the, you had the Joe Cannon goal after it was just two or three minutes, caught a ball over Jackie Terrell, stuck it in the back of the net. That was a really impressive goal with team. Davy Burke was flying. Remember he scored that unbelievable point where he was kind of turning and flying and knocked the ball over the bar. Jeez, that was as good a point as you'll see. Just to look at this um, Kilkenny team that ultimately appeared in the replay of All-Ireland against uh, Galway in 2012. I'll just bring it up on screen here. So in goals, David Herity, <coughs> cornerback Paul Murphy, JJ Delaney, Jackie Terrell, Tommy Walsh, Brian Hogan, Kieran Joyce, midfield Michael Fennelly, Richie Hogan, Killian Buckley, Richie Power, Owen Larkin, and then TJ Reid, Walter Walsh, who came in and scored 1-3 on his debut, and Henry Shefflin. 
I mean, it's it's not like there are a whole lot of um, glaring weaknesses in that team. And the way they dispatched Tipperary in the semi-final, I know they probably had a bit of a slow start in the draw in All-Ireland final, but the way they absolutely hammered, uh, let's be honest, a very disjointed Tipperary team, especially in that second half. I mean, there, there aren't too many weaknesses in that team. No, you do well pick all than that. And funny enough, like the backdoor back door route that they came, having to play an All-Ireland quarter-final. Remember, um, TJ was man at a match against Limerick in the quarter-final. And apparently, Shefflin said after in his book that TJ had had conversations with him about considering packing it in and that kind of crack. And he ended up being man of the match, I think, in that game and ended up getting an all star. And now, you know, what, eight, eight years later, we're talking about him as one of the greatest hurlers of all time, which is just it's unbelievable. Then you move through to the semi final. Um, they obviously had that mad scenario where Larry chased around after Tommy for 70 minutes in one of the craziest things I've ever seen happen on a GA pitch and despite the fact that it was very tight at half time like Kilkenny obliterated uh, Tip in the second half beat them by 18 points fair enough Tip were disjointed um, and that was one of the few times I'd say that Tipperary team totally threw in the towel in the second half part of the, part of the result and it'd been such a dominating result was Tip threw in the towel and Kilkenny put their foot in the throat and just pushed it further down and then they came into the all Ireland final against Galway and you're probably talking about I, I would say the, the best, one of the best individual performances I've ever seen, particularly in the second half, uh, mostly in the second half, when Kilkenny needed to be kind of lifted towards the line. Uh, Henry Shefflin lifted him towards the line when few around him were doing anything else. Like um, So it, there's a fair story involved in that year. You know, eight looks very, very, um, eight looks outstanding when you go down through it and, you know, dominating results, some seriously dominating results in 12. But so much, um, so many subplots going on around it as well, without even going into the replay. Yeah, I think it's a bit lazy to just say, "Oh, Kilkenny, two thousand and eight. That was it. That was hurling perfection." I mean, it was brilliant. But you're talking about a poor Offaly team, a poor Wexford team, an average Cork team, and an average Waterford team, like a average to good Waterford team, would we'll say. If I'm trying to be fair, whereas what they beat in 2012 was a Tipperary team that, even though I think they'd become very disjointed and, and sort of predictable under Declan Ryan, it was a team, many of whom had won in All-Ireland, pretty much all of them had won in All-Ireland, whereas that Watford team hadn't. Then you were against the Galway team that was a far better proposition than either that Cork team or that Watford team. So I think 2012, they definitely beat better opposition. Now, you can make a case that 2008 is still better, but it's just not cut and shut. No, it's definitely not cut and dry. It's definitely not cut and dry. And even the way the way Kilkenny dominated uh, a Galway team that not not saying they looked unstoppable, but it looked like it looked like in twelve, it kind of looked like at different stages. It was Galway's year after the Leinster final, during the Leinster final, and after it, the in the drawn game, it just looked like it just looked like things were falling into place for Galway, and Kilkenny were still able to wrestle the momentum away from them, and then basically totally batter them in the all Ireland replay, when, as you said, Wally Walsh came in and scored 1-3 on his debut. Um, yet another subplot in a remarkable year where they played seven games. As you said, in eight, they played four games. Didn't beat teams that were really in their pomp. Whereas in 12, I would say, they beat much stiffer opposition and had a much tougher journey to get there. Let's have a look at that 2018, that much vaunted 2018. So in goals, PJ Ryan... And that was a year before he was uh, man of the match in the All Ireland final against Tip. Michael Ryan, Noel Hickey, or sorry, Michael Cavanagh, Noel Hickey, Jackie Tyrrell, uh, Tommy Walsh, Brian Hogan, JJ Delaney, Chaff Fitzpatrick, and Derek Ling in midfield. Martin Comerford, Richie Power, Owen Larkin, Eddie Brennan, Henry Shefflin, and Taggy Fogarty. Uh, Taggy was one of the players that started the draw in All Ireland final himself, and Colin Fenley, and then both were dropped again the following year. Although as was often the case with Brian Cody, he would drop lads, and that doesn't mean that they were gone for good. He'd bring them back later on. But there's no denying the quality in that team in 2008. Ah, oh, it's a serious team, really, when you look at... like there's a, And even there's a fair bit of movement. We've talked through like, a good few of the different Kilkenny teams we've gone through so far, but there's been a nice bit of subtle movement. Like, from 8 to 12, obviously, Noel Hickey was... was replacing you know what replaced the A team to the 12 team is like Wally Walsh a mainstay at Kilkenny for the last decade Richie Hogan a hurler of the year TJ Reid a hurler of the year do you know what I mean like what's 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 replaced them is has been outstanding and have really stood the test of time 
Um, so I suppose we're getting to the stage where we're going to have to make our decision on this one. Which way are you leaning? Well, <laughs> we've played like we've played devil's advocate in fairness, and we've made a fair case for the twelve team. I think we've made a fair, a compelling enough case, but. To me, the most devastating performance I've ever probably seen in a big game is the 08 final. Um, I actually just watched it back there a couple couple of nights ago, and it was, you know, it was not saying nip and tuck, but it was tight in the first ten or fifteen minutes, and then all of a sudden, bang! It was two eight to four points. Eddie Brennan had two goals, got within probably the guts of a minute, and you know, they they it was a, it was a runaway train from there on. So like. As dominant scores, if you were talking about delivering perfection on the biggest day in 08, they did, and I'd say that would probably it's 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 not it's more marginal than I thought it would be when I when I put the case to it. But 08 probably probably if I say it, it'd be about 60, 40, 08 for me. Yeah, I probably something similar myself, and and I was kind of coming into it thinking this is almost one of these kind of videos or matchups where we're going to be a little bit like struggling to even make a case for it. But you'd have to say that Kilkenny team doing it two in a row also, and I know. 08 had more on the line in the sense of doing the first four in a row since Cork with their asterisk four in a row in the 1940s and the fact that they didn't just deliver but absolutely blew a team out of it in an All-Ireland final especially like against a good manager like Davy Fitz you'd expect that team to be pretty much able to able for anything on the day but of course they weren't so you'd have to credit Kilkenny more so than than sort of I, I and I know those Watford players would say that the game passed them by or whatever but there's a reason it passed them by. But yeah, you'd have to go with 2008, probably marginally enough. Maybe, yeah, like yourself, 60-40, but uh, yeah, it has to be definitely, 2008. But definitely swung by the final performance, which was perfection. Do you know what I mean? If, if you were going on a, on a body of work, it's very, very tight. But 08, just for me. 